Yay! Hey friends! Okay, for today's Q&A, we're going to talk about negative self-talk. And specifically, the question that I keep hearing is, how do I quit the negative self-talk, right? How do I just get rid of that entirely? Uh, and that's a great question. I love that. Um, I think there's so much we can unpack here, right? There is so, so much that goes into that negative self-talk that we've got. There's the question of like, where did that come from? Why did we believe that originally? Why did we absorb that? Um, why do we keep doing that to ourselves? Why do we keep believing these things that we have um, you know, pulled in from somewhere outside of ourselves and um, allowed to be part of our, our inner narrative? Right? Where does that come from? Why do we do that? I think those answers are bigger and systemic, but let's start with right where you are right now. So if you're asking that question of how do I break the cycle of negative self-talk? How do I get rid of it? Um, if you're anything like me, you're like, I would love to just like, now that I'm aware of it, wake up tomorrow and have it be gone. This is this yucky thing and I do not want it. Um, but that doesn't really tend to work out for most of us. So I wanna tell you, that's exactly where we started. Permission granted that story was it, with a time that I was really becoming aware of my own inner negative self-talk, this inner critic voice that would come up for me and really trying to figure out what do I do with this, right? This isn't okay, uh, but what do I believe instead? What do I tell myself instead? What do I want to believe instead of all of this? Um, and so we really work through all of that there, but I want to tell you that I think we have this tendency when we notice that we're saying these things to ourselves, things like, um, oh, I knew it was going to go like that, or I never get things right, or who do I think I am to even be doing this, or um, oh, I'm the worst, I'm just the worst at this. You know, when we're hearing that stuff, there's a temptation to believe that it doesn't really affect anybody else, right? That's just something that I'm saying to myself. Even if it's something that I would literally never say to my kids or to my friends or to my partner, right? The fact that I'm saying to myself, eh, no big deal, right? And that is just not true, right? That's why we let it hang out. We let that keep continuing because we think it just affects us. But that's just not true, right? How you talk to yourself is going to affect how you show up in your world. It's going to affect how you treat other people. It's going to affect whether or not you let other people in, how close you let them get. Because if you let them get too close, they might figure out what it is that you think you know about yourself, right? They're going to figure out those same negative things that you're saying to yourself. If they get too close, you kind of hold people out there a little bit. Um, you are afraid to take risks when you are really inundated with that negative self-talk because um, that's when it comes up, right? When you step outside of your little box and you try something outside of your comfort zone and things don't quite go as planned um, and you're feeling maybe shame or anger or fear or resentment, something comes up for you and that voice comes in and it's like, yep, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it. Yep, you should have done that thing. Right, when you're hearing that inner critic, it's keeping you small and it's keeping you separate from other people and that's not cool. Um, so we really do need to find ways to address that. Um, so if you're in that place that you're saying, what do I do? How do I quit this negative self-talk? Where do I go from here? How do I get rid of it? A couple things I want you to keep in mind. One is that especially if you've just become aware of this voice that comes up, right? This, this narrative, these things that you say to yourself, if you've just started to notice them, probably the amount of time that you've been noticing them compared to the amount of time that you've been actually saying those things or believing those things, um, probably you've been doing it for a lot longer than you noticed, right? For a lot of us, we absorbed those ideas a long, long time ago. Those came from a voice outside of us when we were small or when we were um, going through something really formative and it just stuck. And we maybe didn't notice it for a long while. We didn't even notice the things we were saying and believing until recently. So you know what? Even though we've just become aware of it and now we're like, ooh, I want that thing to go away, it maybe it's gonna take us a minute to turn that ship around, right? That's a pattern we've had for a long, long time. And it maybe it's gonna take a second to establish a new habit, a new pattern there, and that's okay. We don't need to judge ourselves for that. We can have a lot of grace for it just taking a minute to turn that ship around, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing I want you to know is that when you start to see that thing, that negative self-talk come up, and you're like, oh, I've been aware of that, I want to change that thing, but here it is again. It's really tempting to start judging ourselves for having that negative self-talk, right? It pops up again and you're like, oh, am I not over this yet? Have I not outgrown this? Have I not figured this out? What we're doing is we're adding negative self-talk about the negative self-talk. That is not going to fix anything, okay? So when you start to notice 
that you have this negative self-talk, you have this inner critic voice, you're aware of it and you want it to go away, just start by observing it instead of judging it, okay? Or instead of judging yourself for having it. It's just, it's there. It's not shocking that it's there, right? You absorbed that idea a long time ago, whatever that idea is. You had a pattern of believing it or telling that thing back to yourself over and over again. It's not shocking. It's not shocking that it's there. That's okay. We're gonna do something with it, but we're not gonna judge ourselves for having it, okay? So we're gonna give ourselves grace when it takes a minute to turn that around, and we're going to not judge ourselves when we see that habit still coming up again. Because it is a habit. And what do we do with habits? Okay, when you have a bad habit, it is so much easier to replace that bad habit with something good than to just quit it, right? Just to just go cold turkey, we're not gonna do that thing anymore. Usually it's a lot harder to do that than to bring in something new. So that's what I really recommend and that's what I did with um, the negative self-talk in particular. So first, the very first thing that I would do is talk back to it, right? When you hear that inner critic come up, when you hear that voice saying, oh, I knew I couldn't do this. I knew it was gonna go like that or who do you think you are, or how dare you, or, um, you know, oh, I'm just, I'm the worst at this. That's one that comes up for me a lot, oh, I'm the worst. Um, when you hear that, don't just let it stand, right? You don't let that happen. You, that's not the kind of language we allow around here in our own heads, so we just, you know, you notice it and you say, oh, okay, well, thanks for that opinion. That's an opinion, I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there, right? I heard you, I acknowledge you, inner critic, um, and I'm gonna take that opinion and just, we'll put it over here, and, We'll consider whether I really believe that or not, right? So you just start by talking back to it. Um, when you hear that one that says, how dare you? You say, you know what, how dare I not? How could I not try this new thing, step into this new place? How could I not? Um, and you find something that just interrupts that voice right away, okay? Because we are not cool with letting that kind of rhetoric stand in our heads. So we just let it know. We're gonna interrupt you right here. And then the second thing is we find something else that's truer, something else you really believe to replace it with. So for a lot of us, that inner critic, it's different for each of us, but whatever you have, it tends to be the same thing that you're saying over and over again, okay? Or at least have the same kind of um, underlying idea. Sometimes that idea sounds like, oh, I'm too much, or I'm not enough, or I can't get things right, or everybody else seems to know how to do it and I just don't. Okay, try to notice what it is, right? What's that kernel? beneath that negative self-talk. And do you believe it? Do you really believe that about yourself? Because I bet you don't. I bet if you're starting to notice it and you're like, how do I get rid of this? It's because you don't actually believe the things it's telling you, right? So instead, what do you believe? And what can you bring out when you hear that self-talk come up? So when that thing comes up and says, oh, I knew I was gonna get it wrong, um, you might come back with, you know what? I get things wrong sometimes because I'm trying. I'm trying new things and that's important to me. And it's okay to make mistakes, right? If you've decided ahead of time what you believe, then when that, that voice pops up, that pattern, you start having a new pattern to replace it with. Um, one that's really helpful to me is the yet rule, which is when I hear any kind of self-defeating statement in my head or in the world, um, something that's just like, oh, I did it wrong. I don't know how to do this. I can't do this. Whenever I hear those, I just drop a yet right at the end of that, right? I can't do it yet. I didn't get this right yet. I don't even know what to do yet, right? Because what happened before in the past does not define what's gonna happen in the future. I don't know how to do it yet. I can learn, I can learn stuff, I can do new things. Um, so that, that yet rule for me is so empowering because it's a word of possibility. Right? It's speaking to the truth that where I am is not who I am. It's not a fixed identity. I can keep growing and changing and doing new things and learning new things and becoming um, more of who I really am. So yet is always a helpful one to me. Um, and then more specifically for you, what is it that you believe? So when I hear myself saying, ugh, I'm the worst, right? I don't really believe that. That's really not um, a helpful thing for me in my life. It's not hopeful and it's not helpful. So instead, I come back to, you know what, this is who I am and this is where I am right now, right? This is just the truth of who I am. It's not about the best, it's not about the worst, it's about the truth, right? Because if we think that our value is in being perfect, that's never gonna work out for us. Humans are not perfect. We're not meant to be, and that's okay. We don't need to be perfect. We don't need to be um, anything other than what we are. So your value is not in perfection. Your value is in being you, right? That's where your worth is. It's just in you being 
you. You are already worthy, you're already enough, you're already okay. So when those kinds of things come up where you're hearing, oh, I'm just not enough. Oh, I just don't know how to do these things. Everybody else knows how to do. You can come back to, okay, maybe, but my value isn't in being perfect. My value isn't in getting everything right, right? I'm okay as a person just being who I really am and doing my best and showing up and listening and connecting and trying again. All of those things are what I value, not being perfect, not making no mistakes, okay? So when you know what you believe and you have something you can replace that negative self-talk with, um, you start to create that pattern to replace the old pattern. And that's where I think we start to really see change and seeing that we don't have to just stick with that pattern that we got a long time ago. Most of the time we absorb that Whole long time ago and we've just been saying it over and over again we can start to replace it with something new something conscious that we really do believe and want to keep putting into the world okay so um, that I think is how we start to rewrite that narrative how we start to quit the negative self-talk it's not an on-off switch right we can give ourselves grace because it takes a little while to turn that around um, we're gonna choose not to judge ourselves <clears throat> but just to observe it we're gonna interrupt it, and we're gonna replace it with something that's truer, that we really believe more than we believe, that negative self-talk, okay? That is today's Q&A. If you have questions for me, please do message me or leave them in the comments here so that I can come back and answer those another day, okay? Talk to you soon, bye-bye.